Good morning, brethren, sisters, and Church of the Living God. Hello. Well, this is um, this is an impromptu video. Um, I had I had not planned on doing a video today, but these things are not up to me. I'm going to be addressing something that um, I've addressed this before in a video about oh maybe a year, maybe two years ago. Um, called when challenged I'm but um, I, I'm going to bring it up again it, it needs to be addressed again um, because we are going to be addressing idolatry now when we think of an idolatry uh, right away we think of what we think of what worshiping a statue or something like that right or whatever but you have to be aware that there are many things that could be turned into idolatry. You know, anything that takes the place of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and anything that definitely takes the place the word of the scriptures um, is idolatry. Okay? All right, and we, we have to address this because there are a lot of people out there who are of the church of the living God and those who are not of the Church of the Living God, but say they are, they're actually Christians, who, um, who tend to worship men. Man worship, okay? And, when it, and, and for an example, look at the Catholics, okay? They worship the Pope. They worship idols. And they are given to that because uh, the Catholic removes the second commandment about where, um, worshiping idols and they bump up the Tenth Commandment to make it two commandments. So to the Catholic, they remove the Second Commandment and they take uh, the Tenth Commandment and split it into two. Okay, I'll put a link in the video where uh, we go over the commandments of the Catholic versus the commandments of Scripture. Okay, But that kind of mentality has bled down through the centuries of worshiping idols. And it's something that you have to be very, very cautious about yourself because um, there are people out there who call themselves authorized version of the scriptures believers who worship men. And they equate God and salvation even unto men. Now you and I as a church of the living God, what's our standard? And those of you satanic, devil, Catholic, coadjutor, Jesuits who pretend to be of the Church of the Living God and you are not, um, okay, even you guys. are You guys, in order to put that sticker on your facade, you're supposed to say what? That the authorized version is our standard, right? Right? Even you devil, coadjutor, Jesuits, yeah, you put that sticker on and, uh, yeah. You're supposed to say that. We know we're supposed to say that. But do we truly hold to that? That this is the standard? I sure do, Brad. Then why do some of you worship men? Hmm? You know, my enemies who attack me um, in emails and stuff like that, they, uh, they like to pose a lot of insults onto Brian Denlinger at me. As though that's going to stir me to rush to his defense and to be all rabid, like some people do get rabid in defending Brian Denlinger. And you want to see a really good example of some people who get rabid? Look at people who defend Peter Ruckman. Yeah. Yeah. There are people out there who defend, uh, who would probably take a bullet for Peter Ruckman. And unfortunately, there are people out there who would probably take a bullet for Brian Denlinger. And those of you of the Church of the Living God, there are those of you who know that. See, the enemies of not only myself, but of the Church of the Living God, well, within this thing of YouTube and whatever, and uh, whatever platform it is, they like to call people Denlingerites. And unfortunately, there are some people out there who are, in fact, Denlingerites, who make Brian their standard. If Brian has spoken, then it so, is so. There are people like that. 
especially when it comes to Pete Ruckman. If Pete Ruckman has says it, it's as good as scripture itself. And people are like, that we there are, we don't do that. Yeah, right. I've seen it in comments. A dearly, dearly beloved sister of mine, of ours, has seen it. Okay? But we're going to address this issue of idolatry. Because you know what? And, um, you know, <laughs> people... <laughs> you know, you, you, my enemies, hi, who send me those, those things about, you know, purposely insulting Brian and whatnot, trying to stir me, you're, you're wasting your time. Okay, uh, I do not, I, I worship the Lord Jesus Christ, and this is my standard. Uh, you can go ahead and insult Brian Denlinger to me all day long. Okay, you can go ahead. Uh, I don't idolize the man, I worship him, thank you. Okay, now there's something, now you, if you want to go to the defense of a brother or a sister, that's fine. There's nothing wrong for sticking up for one of your own. There's nothing wrong with that. But when people make it a thing of idolatry and rabid viciousness, that's a problem. That's a really big problem. And we're going to address this today. Okay? Unfortunately, this video might make a few of you angry. But when it comes to this thing of idolatry, Okay, idolatry is not just worshiping the Mary statue or or the the picture of the satanic bird Trinity thing or or a Buddha statue or even a picture of Peter Ruckman himself. Uh, 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 you, you know, it's idolatry is a little bit more broad than that. Anything that you put before the Lord is idolatry. Anything. And that's usually including yourself. But let's let's go to the scriptures. Get your authorized version of the scriptures. Let's begin in Exodus chapter 32. Okay. Let's begin in Exodus chapter 32. Get your authorized version of the scriptures and follow me along. You are expected to follow me along. And I'm going to speak to you as though you are, okay? Exodus chapter 32, we will be reading verses 1 on to verse 8. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out to the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron, and said unto him, Up, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, for as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we what not what has become of him. So, because Moses was not there, they kind of panicked because they didn't have a visible thing to see, to look to. Okay? They needed something to see. Uh, we walk by faith today in this dispensation, not by sight. And remember, when it comes to the thing about sight, the Jews required a sign and the Greeks, Gentiles, seek after wisdom. Okay? Let's continue. And Aaron said unto them, Aaron, the high priest, okay? Aaron, who should have known better. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings, which are in your ears of your wives, of your sons, and of your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand and fashioned it with a graving tool. After he had made after he had made it a gold a molten calf, and they said, These be thy gods, plural, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Gods, plural. And Aaron, now check this out. And Aaron saw it, and when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made proclamation. Whoops. 
And Aaron made, beg your pardon, brother. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. Hmm. And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Okay. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go, get thee down, for thy people which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. They have made them a molten calf and have worshipped it and have said and have sacrificed thereunto and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Okay? So, and look at that verse right there. Okay? Molten calf. Singular. One molten calf. And these be thy gods, plural. Hmm. Now, isn't that interesting, huh? One molten calf, but these be thy gods, plural. Could it be that the Egyptian, the Babylonian, Egyptian, Catholic Trinity might have been around way back then? And openly known as address and addressed as heresy? Oh, no, 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 of course not. But the people wanted something to see. They made themselves a golden calf and said, These be thy gods. And they worshiped the golden calf. And, then, and if you keep reading, it did not go well for them. But, I, you know, I want to point this out when it comes to Aaron, who should have known better, okay? Uh, let me see, where was this? Um, when Moses confronts Aaron, uh, verse 21 on to verse 24, okay? And Moses said unto Aaron, what did, this, what did this people unto thee that thou hast brought so great a sin upon them? And... The Adamic nature, the old man, is the woman that thou gavest me to, uh, to be with. She did give me of the tree, and I did eat. And of course, Eve, the serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. See, the old man, the old nature, is to blame other people and not to take direct responsibility. Okay? That's the old man. Okay? But, and Aaron said, verse 22... Let not the anger of my Lord wax hot. Okay. Thou knowest the people, see, he's deflecting already, that they are set on mischief. For they said unto me, they said, Make us gods which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. That's what they said to him. And I said unto them, Whosoever hath any gold, let them break it off. So they gave it me. Then I cast it into the fire. And there came out this calf. <laughs> uh, so you see, Aaron himself, when confronted by Moses, what did he do? Did he say, you're right. I, you're right. I, I send... For, Lord, forgive me, please, please. For, I, I have sinned, Lord, you know. No. What did he do? What did he do? Okay? It's like, whoa, hey, Moses calls him, calls Moses Lord, by the way. Of course, lowercase l. But it's like, hey, Lord, chill. You, you know the people, okay? It's them, you know. You know these people. See? Passing off responsibility, okay? For they, it's them, said, make us gods, okay? And then it's like, okay, well, since they were bothering me, it's like, okay, go ahead. Since you insist, okay, uh, why don't you give me the gold. And then I, I took their gold and, whoo, this calf miraculously came out. 
that was, you know, that was an oopsie if there ever was one on Aaron's part, who should have known better. When the people came to him um, in verse 1, he should have been like, whoa, hey, repent. This is evil. Stop it. But no. 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 He was just as guilty as they are. Even more so because he ought, because he had ought to have known better. So, and if you were to, and like I said, if you were to read this whole chapter, you would see the consequences, the dire consequences of idolatry. And yeah, they were worshiping a, a, a golden calf. Okay. Go to Leviticus chapter 19. Leviticus chapter 19. Okay. Now, the first uh, reference, the first appearance of the word idol, okay, is in Leviticus chapter 19. We will be reading verses 1 on to verse 4. Okay. Leviticus 19, verses 1 on to verse 4. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, and say unto them, Ye shall be holy, separate. For I, the Lord your God, am holy, separate, other. God is other. We, as the church of the living God today, we are to be holy, separate than that. And from that which calls itself Christian. Okay? We are of the church of the living God. I am not a Christian. Oh, Brad, a oh, shush, shush. What's Christian, by the way? Huh? You want to you wanna be associated with that which is called Christian? Not I. I'm of the church of the living God. Okay? I'm of the church of the living God. That Christian is what the lost world called us, not we, called ourselves. Peter spoke about it. It's better to be called a Christian than to be called a murderer. In that, he equated it in that likeness. Okay? Okay? You want to be associated with one as Christian? Fine. Go ahead. Then how, then how is there distinction between you? Well, you're a Christian, right? Well, then you have to go into how many explanations? No. No. I believe we ought to do it like they said in the scriptures. We're of the church of the living God or church of God. Okay? Not Christian. We are to be holy. Other. Okay? Verse 3. Ye shall fear every man his mother and his father, and keep my Sabbaths. I am the Lord your God. This is for the Jews, by the way. We don't keep the Sabbath today. Okay, that is not a requirement for us to stay saved, be saved, or anything like that. Okay, okay, just this is written for the Jews. But, verse 4. Turn ye not unto idols, make, nor make to yourselves molten gods, I am the Lord your God. Okay, so you see the word idols. This is the first appearance of the word idols. Uh, idol in any form, okay? Right there, okay? Nor make to yourselves molten gods. I am the Lord your God. So there, there's a comma there after the idols, obviously, right? So idols, comma, nor make to yourselves Molten gods, I am the Lord your God. Okay? In Catholicism, all their saints, the saints of Catholicism, you can directly, if you want to take the time, you can directly trace every saint of Catholicism that they, you know, like St. Michael, St. This, St. That. Um, you can directly tie onto a pagan deity. Okay? You can. And see, that's what the Catholics have done. They have taken that what is pagan and put a Christian label on it. Okay? All right. But the idol here, idols here is not just 
molten gods, like the statue of Mary, the statue of St. Joseph, the statue of St. Francis, okay? Idolatry is a little bit more than just molten images, okay? And also now, go to 1 Samuel chapter 15. 1 Samuel chapter 15. Okay? First Samuel chapter 15, when Saul goes and uh, uh, disobeys the Lord and then comes to Samuel and saying, I have obeyed the Lord and stuff like that, okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. First Samuel chapter 15. <clears throat> Let's begin at... Uh, Verse 22, and we will read verses 22 and verse 23. Go ahead and read all of 1 Samuel on your own time and see what happened. And you'll see another good example of the Adamic nature, the old man in Saul, blaming the people first, not taking any responsibility at first, but uh, push it, putting it off to the people. Okay, but then eventually, of course, Saul's like, well, yeah, okay, yeah, it's it's them first. It was their fault, but it, okay, yeah, yeah, it was because of them. See, not taking full accountability or responsibility. Okay, very good example of it. But we want to look at verses 22 and verse 23. And Samuel said, hath, hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. And then finally, of course, Saul's like, okay, fine, you're right, I've, I've sinned. But still clinging is, well, I'm, I'm, okay, I'm partly responsible. No. But the point is that we wanted to look at is idolatry. Okay? Idolatry. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Stubbornness. Like defending to the death. A man. Okay? Go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. I'm going to do something here a little different. Forgive me, Lord, but I'm going to make a point. You ready to get your idols kicked? First Corinthians chapter three verses one on to verse eleven. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal, fleshly. In your flesh, living in your flesh. Okay? For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? Now think about that. You go to some of these channels on YouTube or some of these forums and see how people rabidly defend Peter Ruckman. And how some people rabidly defend Brian Denlinger. It's it's horrifying. It's like, oh, I don't idolize a man. Shut up. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Okay? For while one saith, I am of Paul. And another, I am of Apollos. Are ye not carnal? Here, let me put a little spin on it for you. For while one saith, I am of Ruckman, and another, I am of Brian. 
Are you not carnal? So, Brother Brian and Peter Ruckman, they're the standard? You're of Brian or Ruckman? Who then is Paul? And who is Apollos? But ministers by whom ye believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? I have planted Apollos watered, <laughs> but Ruckman gave the increase? But Brian gave the increase? But God gave the increase. Now, there's nothing wrong with listening to godly preachers. Amen, amen. But when you start putting man on a pedestal and it starts to go to their own head too, that's dangerous. That's dangerous. Very dangerous. And there are some of you out there who need to check yourself. You really do. You really do. Like I said, you know, I love Brother Brian and the Lord. I really do. Okay? But he's not the standard. And he would even say... He's not the standard, okay? Peter Ruckman, he's not the standard. And there are lots, I've seen it with my, with my own two eyes, in comments and stuff. I've seen it. I've encountered it. There are people out there who hold Ruckman's word as if it were the word of God. And unfortunately, and come on, there are people who do that for Brother Brian as well. Who emulate him. Same with Ruckman. I mean, you can look and find these videos online of YouTube of how some of these uh, bad... Ad uh, thank you, Brother, by the way, for that link. Uh, for the Bad Attitude Baptists that are linked with Ruckman, throwing things in the air and acting like they were Pentecostals. Even that, 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 that one guy, um, uh, Gene Kim, um, there's a video of him with the woo, 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 uh, throwing, swinging his jacket around, acting like a, acting like an idiot. Yeah. Yeah. What's that called? That's called idolatry. That's called idolizing a man, making a golden calf out of a man. And the modern Ruckmanites are notorious for it. They're bloodthirsty savages. They are. Look at how they went after people for copywriting. I know of an individual who um, had numerous channels taken down because he would post Ruckman stuff. And eventually, the Ruckmanites would find him and get his channel taken down. Okay? A lot of these Ruckmanites, they got some issues. You do. And I hope you get offended because you need to check yourself on that. Okay? When you start holding a man above the scripture and defending him to the death. Hello? 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 Is that on, people? Okay, seriously. Okay, let's continue this. From verse 6 again. I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planteth anything, neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. Okay? It's God who gives the increase. Now, now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. And every man will receive his own reward according to his labor. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. According to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. 
For no, for other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Peter Ruckman. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, which is Brian Denlinger. Which is the Roman Catholic Church. Now, uh, for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. And look over here at uh, Second, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 on to verse 6. Okay? And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. See, if someone is saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, you have died. You have died to this world. In order for someone to be saved, born again, converted, there has to be a death. Something has to die. Your old man, your self-righteousness. Okay? There has to be a death in order to be reborn again. And see, those who dispute that and just skip over that and go to right straight to belief, guess what? You're not saved. Okay? And those same people are the ones who are adamantly against the new birth, the changed life. Because if something dies, something new has to take its place. There has to be a rebirth. Okay? And when Paul says, I, uh, for I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Hey, what is he saying? Uh, he wanted to know who was of the church of the living God and who wasn't. Okay. That's what he looked for. Cru Christ and him crucified in you. That's what he was looking for. Okay. That's what he wanted to know. Christ and him crucified. Okay? Hold your place here. Of course, we're going there. Come on. We've gone through these before, but I mean, come on, brethren. Some of this idolatry uh, around men is just really, really. And see, it's, it's, it's some of those of you like that are out there who like put Brother Brian on a pedestal and our true Denlingerites, it's you guys who are giving these devils the fuel to start their fires. And, and some of these Ruckmanites? Wow. But this, uh, Galatians chapter 2, verses 20 and 21. Okay. Uh, verse, uh, verse 2 in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Galatians 2, 20 and 21. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, what you do, then Christ is dead in vain. Okay? Meaning, so, go back to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. So, that's what Paul was looking for. He determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Okay? Now, see, when the Lord saves you, there must be some things present. And see, this is what the evil, uh, the evil Jesuit coadjutor, easy believism heretic, heretic does. Okay? In order for the Lord to save you, you have to come to him, look at me, you have to come on to him on his terms, okay? You have to be broken of your self-righteousness, okay? That brokenness meaning you're not a good person. There's nothing you can do to save yourself. You're without hope. And knowing that, that's going to cause godly sorrow because as the Lord guides you, he will let you know that he paid for your price, for your sin that you committed against him. And because of you, he went to the cross and died. Okay? And that 
when you are broken of yourself, knowing that you aren't good and there's nothing you can do, and that you find out that the Lord Jesus Christ died because of what you did to him, that should cause sorrow in you. Contrition. So, you are broken of your self-righteousness. You're not a good person. You can't save yourself. And knowing what, and knowing that, and knowing what the Lord did for you because of what you did to him, that you have sinned against him, and that he took your punishment on that cross, that ought to produce in you sorrow. And if that doesn't, then there's something wrong. And see, brokenness and sorrow will come bring you to fear because the Lord will show you, okay, he died for you on that cross because of what you did to him. And unless he saved you, there's only one option for you. Hell. Where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Okay? So, brokenness and sorrow will lead onto the fear of the Lord. And I'll tell you something, buddy. When the fear of the Lord comes upon you, when you come to the realization that you're not good and you can't save yourself, and that it's your fault because of what you did, your sin, that he died on that cross and shed his blood to cleanse you of that sin, okay? That's going to produce in you a fear. And that fear of hell, fear of the Lord, standing before the Lord, knowing what you know, and that he is just right and fair and equal to put you in hell. See, Paul said, to save sinners of whom I am chief, you are not like what Aaron did. You are not like Saul, pointing the finger, adding yourself to the number. Well, yeah, yeah, I did sin, but it's mostly, no, no, no. It's full responsibility and accountability. That's going to scare the hell out of you. Oh, <gasps> yeah, that's going to scare the hell out of you. And that's going to bring you to the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I, I. Lord Jesus Christ, please save me. Please forgive me. Please, I repent. Wash me clean. Save me from hell. Save me from your wrath. Someone who is truly broken in such a condition, broken, sorrowful, and fearful of the Lord, you tell me, those of you of the church of the living God who came unto the Lord, broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord, called upon the name of the Lord. It's not one, two, three. It, it just happens in one fluid motion, one event. You tell me, how does someone curse and swear their whole time through their prayer calling on the name of the Lord? You answer me that. You answer me that. I, I, I could, how could, I swear and curse? while calling upon the name of the Lord, being broken and contrite, and having the fear of the Lord, and cussing and swearing while calling on his name? Dude. You, you tell me. Tell me in the comments. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, come as you are. Uh, when you have the fear of the Lord, when you are broken and contrite, um, th th no, you are not as you are. You're, you're broken and contrite. Okay? And you have fear of the Lord. <laughs> okay? Yes, you, you, don't cl you don't clean up your life first and then come to the Lord. That's what people like Paul Washer teach. And you're, you, after the Lord saves you, you, you are going to sin. Okay, there's no sinless perfection on this earth. Okay, that's what Ray Comfort teaches, okay? You are eternally secure once you are saved. Um, Paul Washer and stuff like that, they teach against eternal security, okay? They teach against once saved, always saved. Okay, and you are once saved, always saved, if the Lord truly saves you. But see, brokenness and contrition, fear... In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, people. When I was in the, in the bathroom at my former employment on that cold country, concrete floor on my knees, crying like a baby, terrified, 
almost wetting myself in fear, do you think? Do you, how could one cuss and swear while calling on the name of the Lord, broken and contrite? You tell me. You tell me. You tell me. You know, if I ever encountered someone like that, who is cussing and swearing, it's like, whoa, hey, hey, hey listen, listen, okay? You, okay, you, you, you need to back off a little bit and look in the scriptures and uh, do a little bit more searching because there's something wrong there. Show me in the scriptures where that happened. Oh, Peter cursed and, swear, uh, cursed and swore in denying Christ. Yeah, yeah. Yes, he did. But cursing and swearing when calling upon the name of the Lord? Uh, show me. Let's continue. Yeah, that's offensive to me. I found I took great offense in that. There are those of you who know what I'm talking about. When the Lord saved me. I was a, I was a mess. I, I, I was broken. Okay, and I was, I was sorry, because the Lord died for me. He, after all I did to him, he went and died for me and shed his blood on the cross and died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He did that for me after all that I did to him. And unless he saved me, I was going to go burn in hell. How, how, how could you swear and cuss your whole way through that? Verse 3 in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. And see, some people, a lot of people like to mistake emotionalism for power. Especially when you look at the charismatics. And yes, some of these Ruckmanite um, Baptists, okay? Yeah, you see it. Okay, you see it. And man's wisdom, using fancy words, but words also that tickle the ears, that lift up the flesh, that get people rah, rah, rah going like that. Okay? That your faith, that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Wisdom of men. How many people of you out there who put Ruckman on a pedestal and look at him as if he is uh, God himself? Oh, we do. Oh, yes, you do. Yes, you do. There are many of you out there who do. Many of you out there who do. Don't kid me. I've seen it. I've seen the comment sections. I've seen how some of these people do get all rabid, foaming at the mouth over a man, defending their little idol. Don't tell me about it. I've seen it. <laughs> and I'll probably experience it in the comment section, won't I? Yeah. Yeah. That your face should not stand in the wisdom of men. but in the power of God. We'll stop at verse 5. Okay. Actually, no. Let's read to verse 8. Howbeit we speak wisdom, the fear of the Lord, among them that are perfect, not sinlessly perfect, people whose heart is perfect. What is a perfect heart? A heart that is broken and contrite and full of the fear of the Lord. Okay? That is a perfect heart. Okay? 
That is the perfection. That is perfect that he is speaking of. Not sinlessly perfect. You couldn't do that even if you locked yourself in a cave for a, a hundred years. You couldn't do it. Thoughts can be sins. Okay? Get over yourself, you sinless perfection devils. Okay? Albeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, fear of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Okay? Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 under verse 14. First Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1, under verse 14. Let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in, us, in stewards that a man be found faithful. God first. Not man first. God first. Okay? But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you. Or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not myself. Making your own judgments out of your own heart. No, you judge yourself according to the scriptures. You don't have your own code of ethics and stuff and whatnot. Your own moral principles. Okay? No. You go to something higher. The scriptures. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. This is your standard. Okay? This is your standard. Not men. Not the doctrines of men. Okay? For I know nothing of my, by myself, yet am I not hereby justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. See, he's talking about, you know, you don't make up your own code of ethics. Even though some of them may be very moral and very high standing and, very, and, and denying the body and all that kind of stuff. But if your own principles contradict what the Lord says are his principles, you have a problem. And guess what? Your principles ain't never going to match the Lord's. You realize that, right? <laughs> I hope you do. Therefore, Judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who will, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. And then shall every man have praise of God. And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. Hold up. I've seen this. I've seen this in the comment sections. I've seen this. I've encountered this. Puffed up. I am of Brian. I am of Ruckman. I am of so-and-so. Okay. <laughs> what is man? This, this is the standard. This is the standard. You see, you know, you you know, you know that. But do you live that? Do you live that? I hope you do. Because, brethren, look at the times that we are in. If you're exalting a man above all, and a man is your final authority. Hey, do you realize, think about this, think about this. Do you realize that you're no better than a Catholic? Oh, because what do Catholics do? They go to a confession where a Jesuit priest hears all their dirty secrets to use that and takes notes of them and uses it for le leverage against them. The Catholics, they, they uh, idolize Mary. They idolize 
Francis de Adelaide Sosa. Those of you who um, put Ruckman up here and Brian Denlinger up here and consider their word final, You have some problems. You have some problems. You really do. You need to check yourself. You need to check yourself. I don't understand that. I really don't. I've defended people before, of course. Brethren, of course. But this bizarre idolatry that comes from some of these people and especially when you bring into question some of their idols. It's like, wait a second. Wait a minute. And they're like, well, well, he taught truth. You, hey, have you ever read Luke chapter 4? When Satan tempted our Lord's flesh. Okay, the flesh which profiteth nothing. The temptation of Satan was pointed at the flesh because God himself can't be tempted. Okay. What Satan spake in Luke chapter 4 in and of itself was truth, was it not? He used it out of context, like devils like to do, yes. But, yes, remember, rat poison is 95% good food. They, uh, Someone could have all their major doctrines right, but they have that 5%, which is poison, a little leaven, leaven at the whole lump, and that'll kill you. This, uh, well, well, he's got all the, the big doctrines, right? The little ones. Uh, hello? Hello? Hi? <laughs> okay? Now, there is no such thing as a perfect preacher, despite what that weird devil Jesuit Martin Richland liked to say about, you know, if you were, you know, saved, you would be te teaching perfectly. Jesuit, uh, Martin uh, Richland, he was a Jesuit who taught ex cathedra himself, okay? He was a Jesuit, an actual Jesuit, okay? But never mind about that, de that devil. But, you know, uh, preachers, teachers, they make mistakes. Hi, <laughs> I've made quite a few mistakes. And see, I leave my mistakes for you to see because it's important that you see when I make a mistake. Because guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? I'm fallible. I make mistakes. I make errors. Okay, I've made some big errors before. Big errors before. Okay? But see, our Lord is merciful and gracious. He will correct you. He will rebuke you. He will chasten you. And when brethren correct me, of course, you make a correction. I'm not afraid of it. I... I the longer you walk with the, our Lord, when you have brethren, brethren, you know, you my enemies, you're not my brothers. Never were, never will be, unfortunately, I believe. Okay? So, to you. But when a saved brother or even a sister, it's like, hey, hey Brad, okay, I know you said this, but what it's like, oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, bo perfect example. The video um, where recently where it was um, script. And I said, script, okay? Two brethren corrected me, got on me right away. Praise the Lord for it. And I, I got word of it. It's like, uh-oh. And the Lord's like, oh, Brad, you, 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 you got it, Lord. You know? See, that, when it comes to something like that, you need to humble yourself and publicly, if you're in this position, you need to publicly, it's like, hey, look, I made an error. I'm sorry. I repent of it. Okay, here, forgive me. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Okay? And when you got someone who never does that, or when they make an error and keep it on the low and stuff like that, and don't come out publicly, it's like, it's like, hey, be careful of that. Because man is fallible. Man is fallible. This is infallible, Jack. The scriptures. 
And if you are saved, born again of the church of the living God, guess what? When you, when you read the scriptures, the author is present in you. Okay? Yes, God will use preachers. Yes, the Lord uses men. <laughs> People, listen to me. Okay, listen to me. Okay? Go, go soak your head in some cold water right now, buddy. Okay? Listen to me. When you start rabidly defending man, men, who you hold as a hero. Well, who's your hero, Brad? People, do you not, what is it with you that you don't see the, the error in that line of thinking? Do we need heroes? We have our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? If anyone is to be a hero unto you, it be the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? If there's someone to high, hold in high esteem, uh, that the Apostle Paul, who is our example. But see, even the Apostle Paul said of himself that he is the least of all saints. He put Christ first. What does Christ say? If anyone love not, uh, love a uh, man, uh, father, mother, wife, children, even himself, more than me, he is not worthy of me? What, do you think that changed in this dispensation? I don't get it. You know, I don't. Paul teaches us how to live after Christ. We look to him for our example. Do you need a hero? <laughs> huh? Really? Let's continue, okay? Let's read verse 5 again. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who will bring with who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts, and then shall every man have praise of God. And these things, brethren, I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that ye might learn in us not to think of men above that which is written, that no one, that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. For who maketh thee to differ from another? And what hast thou that thou didst not receive? And if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou hadst not received it? I put that in context for me personally as to ministry. My ministry. My ministry. My, no, it's the Lord's ministry. It's the Lord. He counts you faithful. So he puts you into the ministry. He puts you into the ministry. You don't take this on this upon yourself. Okay? It's he who puts you there. Okay? And if you received it of the Lord, why do you boast as if you didn't receive it? My ministry this, my ministry that. You hear that from a lot of people. This is my ministry. This is my church building. Yeah. Uh-huh. Nothing is as important as my ministry. Just shut up. Is it your ministry? Well, if it's your ministry, then that must be dependent on what you do then. Right? What you do. Right? Right? <laughs> Dude. I fought... I fought and paid a heavy price, the Lord, on doing this. I fought. Those, uh, my friends, brethren out there, before the Lord, kind of like, Brad, guess what? You, you, <laughs> you know, he's taking everything away. It's like, now you, you, you got no choice now. <laughs> I did have a choice, and the choice I could have taken would have, we, would have been devastating. I had to choose what the Lord wanted for me to do. 
I had to choose what he wanted for me to do. But I fought him on this. Oh, I fought him for this. You know, false prophets, they run. Okay? I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. These false prophets, these devil coadjutors, they're running. They're coming out like, like from the woodwork, like droves, like earwigs out of a chair or something like that. They're just coming out in droves. They're running. Well, the man of God, Lord, I don't want to do this. You're going to do uh, No. Yes. No. Okay. <laughs> and then he chastens you, makes all things fall apart, takes away things from you. Just like, you You get the point I want you to do? Okay. Yes, Lord. But no, these people running, just running. Okay. More on that in a minute. Let's continue. Okay. Verse 8. Now ye are full, now ye are rich. Ye have reigned as kings without us. And I would to God ye did reign, that we also may, might reign with you. That's Paul's sarcasm. For I think God hath set forth us the apostles last. Not first, last. He who is the greatest will be servant unto all as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto all unto the world and to angels and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Yeah. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst and are naked, and are buffeted, and have no certain dwelling place, and labor, working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless, being persecuted, we suffer it, being defamed, we entreat, we are made as the filth of the world, and are the offscoring of all things unto this day. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. Be wary when all men speak well of you. Be wary of men when they lift you up. I, I, in the emails and stuff like that, I get that all the time. You know, trying to puff me up and try, you know, using flattery. It happened on comments with these guys who eventually their true colors be shown for what they really are. It's like, oh, oh, I like your videos. Oh, you're doing a great job, but, you know, you're doing this, but, you know, <laughs> just go away. Shut up. You're wasting your time. Okay. Second Timothy. Second Timothy, chapter three. Second Timothy, chapter three. Second Timothy, not first Timothy, Brad. Thank you, part. Second Timothy, chapter three. Verses 1 on to verse 13. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous. See, if you love your own self, you're going to be covetous of things. Boasters. Boasting of another man. Proud Ruckmanites, proud Denlingerites, proud Bakerites, proud Kimites, who are Ruckmanites. Do um, you realize, unfortunately, that Robert Breaker and Gene Kim are actually, when you look at, when you look deep into Mr. Ruckman, do uh, you realize that Gene Kim and Robert Breaker are far more similar to uh, Pete Ruckman than a lot of you like to give them credit for. Blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Traitors, heady, high-minded, 
lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses, and lead captive silly women laden with sin, sins, led away with divers lusts, ever learning, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, now as Janaeus and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds, reprobate concerning the faith. But they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest, manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience. Persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, which persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea. And all that will live godly, separate, in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But evil men shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Turn now to the book of Jeremiah. The book of Jeremiah. One second, brethren. Okay. Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 16. Oh, let's read on to verse 29. Okay? 16 on to verse 29. Then we'll be done. Um, look, I know this video is going to offend some of you. But brethren, especially right now, okay? Especially right now. <laughs> brethren, we, we, our lives have got to resemble the scriptures, okay? Our lives have got to resemble the scriptures. And we can't put men above our Lord Jesus Christ and his word, the authorized version of the scriptures, okay? And for those who get, are given onto idolatry, who put Brother Brian on a pedestal, who put Peter Ruckman on a pedestal, and worship them as gods, and hold their word above anything else, that's a problem. And that is what is being addressed. Okay? Man is not the standard. Okay? People will say, well, neither Brian nor Pete Ruckman taught that they were the standard. And you're right. But look at look at him. Look at the look at some of these people. Look at them. Okay? Look at them. I mean, there's nothing wrong with defending a brother. But you know if Someone like attacks Peter Ruckman, or, or not attacks, uh, questions, you know, we're supposed to examine all things according to the scriptures, okay? If someone questions Peter Ruckman, whether or not he was saved, um, they'll call you lost for questioning him. <gasps> yeah, they, they will. If someone questions Brother Brian, okay, they'll be like uh, some of these people. Uh, they'll be like, they'll call them lost for questioning, okay? You know, it's <laughs> see, it's the spirit that beareth witness, like mindedness, like spirit, because there is one God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, comprised of what spirit, soul, and body. The spirit that is in us will bear witness unto the truth, okay? Okay. But if the spirit that is in one is leading you on to emotionalism and rabid, violent, threatening, and cursing, you need to check yourselves. Jeremiah 23, verses 16 on to verse 29. We will be done. 
Please consider these things. We, life is too short. We don't have this time to waste with idolatry given unto men. Okay? Okay? We don't have time for this. We don't have time for this. Beginning at verse, verse 16. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart, and not out of their mouth, and not out of the mouth of the Lord. They say still unto them that despise me, The Lord has said, You shall have peace. And they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, No evil shall come upon you. Verse 17 there. Someone who is an easy believism, Jesuit, Catholic, uh, devil coadjutor, you just believe, you'll have peace. No evil will befall upon you because you just believe. Skipping over brokenness and contrition. Okay? Just believe. Oh, oh yeah, you're a sinner. Oh yeah, you're a sinner. You know you're a sinner. Yeah, so is everybody else. Does that sin bring you to sorrow? For who has stood in the counsel of the Lord and hath perceived and heard his word? Who hath marked his word and heard it? Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord has gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind. It shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. Aha, brother. Got it right in uh, two verses, two appearances. Ha <laughs> ha. The anger of the Lord shall not return until he have executed, until he have performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days he shall consider it perfectly. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. They ran. These false prophets are coming out of the woodwork like earwigs out of a chair just coming in droves. They're running. They want to be in the forefront. They want to be in the spotlight. They're running to say, look at me. Look at me. Look at them on here on YouTube. Okay, look at them. They're running. The mark of, uh, one of the many marks of a false prophet is how quick they are, how quick they are in running to the spotlight. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. They're running to make a name for themselves. They're running to point out this, 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 and this. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. See the contrast? One runs to the flesh, the other one runs to their knees in brokenness. Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord? I have heard what these prophets said, that prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. So long shall this be, oh, excuse me, how long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Unfortunately, probably until their death. Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own hearts, of their own heart, excuse me which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. The prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord? Is not, is not my word like a fire? saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh 
the rock in pre in pieces. Verse 28. Let the prophet that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. Like all these charismatics with these weird dreams of theirs. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. Now look at that. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord? Chaff gets burned up right away. Wheat can get burned up too. But with wheat, you can make what? Bread. Wheat is good for the body. Chaff is there to be burned. The, the uh, contrast is the false prophet that has a dream, that's the chaff, okay? And he that hath my word, that's the wheat, okay? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Yeah. And then, verse 29, Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? Brethren, I know you're going to be offended with this video. And I don't really care. Okay? I don't. you got to really be careful with putting men on a pedestal. Okay? You, you really do. I, I, I have seen it in comments. I have encountered it outside my door. Okay? This is our standard. Okay? A man is not our standard. Okay? It's okay for you to, as uh, the church of the living God to defend a brother. That's fine. Go for it. But when you start putting men on pedestals, and taking their word as if it were the word of God. And people will be like, well, no, we don't. Yes, there are those of you who do. I've seen it. I've seen it. Okay? You need to be very careful. Okay? You need to be very, very careful. Because we are not to be led by our emotions. The heart is deceitful and desperately wicked. Okay? We are to be led by the scriptures. Okay? And the spirit of truth who is in you will guide you into all truth. All right? Just please be aware of these things, okay? Remember, there's nothing wrong with going to, to listening to sermons preached by men. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you start making a, a, an idol out of some of these people, What is our standard? A man is not our standard. This is our standard. Don't forget that. Okay? And like I said, pray about this. Consider this. Consider this. Do you have, do we have time right now to get into arguments over defending men. <laughs> I, I, I've seen it. People get into these long, what do they call them, threads over what man has, te what man's teachings. And it's like, this is all, uh, this is all because you're arguing about what, what someone said, not uplifting the Lord or being or edifying our Lord Jesus Christ or edifying the church of the living God through the scriptures. So I know this is going to make a lot of you angry with me. I just want you to consider these things. Okay? You you are at liberty to listen to whomever you want to listen to. You really are. But beware. Beware of the idolatry of men. Okay? 
it's going to be it for this video. Very impromptu. Please consider these things, brethren. I love you. We love you. And thank you all so very much for all that you have done for us. And we will see you in the next video. Lord willing.